a few minutes. I'm going to get the meeting started. Let me know if we're ready to go. Recording in progress. Good afternoon. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Coral Gables Historic Preservation Board. We are residents of Coral Gables and are charged with the preservation and protection of historic or architecturally worthy buildings, structures, sites, neighborhoods, and artifacts which impact a distinct historical heritage of the city. The board is comprised of nine members, seven of whom are appointed by the commission, one by the city manager, and the ninth is selected by the board and confirmed by the commission. Five of the members of the board constitute a quorum, and five affirmative votes are necessary for the adoption of any motion. Lobbyist registration. Any person who acts as a lobbyist pursuant to City of Coral Gables Ordinance 2006-11 must register with the city clerk prior to the engaging in lobbying activities or presentations before city staff, boards, committees, and or the city commission. A copy of the ordinance is available in the office of the city clerk. Failure to provide Failure to register and provide proof of registration shall prohibit your ability to present to the Historic Preservation Board on applications under consideration this afternoon. Lobbyist is defined as an individual, corporation, partnership, or other legal entity employed or retained, whether paid or not, by a principal who seeks to encourage the approval, disapproval, adoption, repeal, passage, defeat, or modifications of any ordinance, resolution, action, or decision of any city commissioner, any action, decision, recommendation of the city manager, any city board or committee, including but not limited to quasi-judicial advisory board, trust authority, or council, or any action, decision, or recommendation of city personnel during the time period of the entire decision-making process on the action, decision, or recommendation, which foreseeably will be heard or reviewed by the city commission or a city board or committee including but not limited to quasi-judicial, advisory board, trust, authority, or council. Presentation made to this board are subject to the city's false claims ordinance, chapter 39 of the city of Coral Gables city code. I now officially call the city of Coral Gables Historic Preservation Board meeting of, what's today's date? April 19th to order, the time is 4.10. Present today are on my left, uh, Mr. Javier Durana, Ms. Donna Spain, Ms. Peggy Rolando, Mr. Michael Maxwell. On my right, Mr. John Fullerton, Mr. Ms. Alicia Bakiovig, and Mr. Bruce Ehrenhaf, and I am uh, Cesar Garcia Pons. <coughs> approval of the minutes. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the meeting held on, what date was that meeting on? March, March 15th. March 15th. Are there any changes or corrections? Move approval of the minutes. It's a motion for approval by Mr. Maxwell. Second. Second by Mr. Fullerton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion passes. Um, notice regarding ex parte communications. Please be advised that the board is a quasi-judicial board and the items on the agenda are quasi-judicial in nature, which requires board members to disclose all ex parte communications. An ex parte communication is defined as any contact, communication, conversation, correspondence, memorandum, or other written or verbal communication that takes place outside a public hearing between a member of the public and a member of a quasi-judicial board regarding matters to be heard by the quasi-judicial board. If anyone has made any contact with a board member when the issue comes before the board, the member must state on the record the existence of the ex parte communication the party who originated the communication and whether the communication will affect the board member's ability to impartially consider the evidence to be presented regarding the matter. Does any board member, does any member of the board have such a communication to disclose at this time? Ms. Couch, are there any deferrals on the agenda for today? Yes, there is uh, the historic designation of 645 Majorca, which is the first item on the agenda. It will be deferred for a month. So to the next meeting. Uh, swearing in. If any persons in the audience will be testifying today, please rise to be sworn in.
Yes, if someone on Zoom will be testifying, they need to appear on camera so that the court reporter can see them. And if anyone here in the audience is going to speak, please stand up and raise your hand to be sworn in by the court reporter. If we could please have the member on Zoom come up on the camera so that the court reporter can view the speaker on Zoom. I can see myself. Thank you very much. Yes. On Zoom, sir, can you please confirm? Yes. I confirm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have any requests for absences? No. Okay. We'll keep an eye on for Mr. And he's, he should be here in about 15 minutes, he said. Great. Um, let's hear the first item, please. <laughs> can you put the PowerPoint up, please? <clears throat> You want me to read it in or you want to read it in? If, if you could read it in, that would be great. Sure. Uh, special certificate appropriate case file COA SP 2023 010, an application for the issuance of a special certificate of appropriateness for the property at 721 Alhambra Circle, a contributing resource within the Alhambra Circle Historic District. Legally described as lot 14, lot 24, Coral Gable section B, according to the plat thereof, as recorded in plat book 5 at page 111 of the public records of Miami-Dade County, Florida. The applicant is requesting design approval for the removal of a second floor projecting bay on the <clears throat> east facade of the residence. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna talk for as long as I can without having to drink something just because I have an issue going on, so um, I apologize. So it's a location map of the property. It's at the intersection of um, Alcazar and Alhambra Circle, just across from Alcazar Plaza. It's a contributing resource within the uh, local historic district. It was designed in 1925, the uh, Revival style. As you can see, there's a 1940s photo on the top of the slide. Um, the projection at the bottom right is what is um, being requested to be removed. It is an original feature of the home. The permit drawings that were issued in 1925 don't actually show all of the facades of the house. Um, they only show the front um, and the floor plans, but you can see the projection um, on the right-hand side where the arrow is indicating, um, so it is an original feature to the home. Um, the applicant is requesting for it to be removed. Um, staff is advocating for it to remain. So I'm going to turn it over to the applicant um, who is on Zoom. They're going to speak first. The architect. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Michael Reinstein. I'm the architect. Um, I had prepared a PowerPoint presentation, which is just the photos that were in the package. The I was called to the site a few months ago. Excuse me, one moment, please. Was this timely submitted information? Yes. We, yes, yes, we do. You can't see his face while he's Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> that should be fine. Sir, if you could just please remain on camera, and Nancy, if you could please confirm that the gentleman remains on camera, I think that would be sufficient, unless our IT um, upstairs is able to put the two of them next to each other or on one camera, one um, TV. But if we can confirm he's available, okay, as long as Ms. Lyons confirms he remains available on video, then we should be able to proceed. My discussion just follows along with the, the photographs that are in the, the paperwork that we submitted. That's fine, you're fine to proceed. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, thank you. So I was called to the, the job site a few months ago uh, by Moker Plumbing that they had uncovered a, a situation that they wanted me to look at. When I, I arrived, I found this uh, odd looking projection on the east side and there's a few cracks in the stucco. The uh, the second photograph that I have there is Excuse from me. the street. Hold on one moment. I, I is thank you. We were just moving along the photos. Thank you. Here they come. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Yeah, very cool. The second photograph shows the only position in the street where you can see the projection kind of through the trees. There. That was the purpose of that angle. From the front, you you cannot see it. And the only way you can see it full on is if, if you walk into the neighbor's property. 
So it's really not a prominent feature of the, of the home. The next photograph shows the current condition where the demolition, uh, they started a repair and started removing rotted wood and stopped when they figured they had a problem. So in this view, you can see the, the floor joists that are doubled up there, which were under the original bathtub and the uh, exterior wall with practically no studs left and the tie beam above. In the next photograph, so a little more detail, you can see the exterior wall there. And you can look, what's odd about this photograph, this area is that you would have expected to see the floor joists cantilevered out, uh, but they're not, they're parallel with the other floor joists. So when I first saw this, I really thought that it was some sort of an addition. No, they're sisters on there. So you, you can see the uh, concrete block below there uh, with no intermediate tie beam. And the projection is roughly 18 inches. You can see one, uh, the, the width between the two uh, floor joists. In the next photograph, that's a detailed uh, uh, photograph of the intersection of the roofs, and you get a, a better view with the next photograph. The next photograph shows this uh, intersection of three different roof planes that is really just impossible to flash properly, and this is what led to all the leaks over the years. Um, currently, it looks like it's just covered with some sort of elastomeric sealant. Uh, so after I did my inspection, um, I sent an email to Ms. Cox, and I worked with her before on another historic remodel. She was very helpful to find out if the if the house was historic and also asked for a microfilm and come to find out that it was uh, part of the original design. After thinking about the project for a while, I realized that this is going to be a very expensive rebuild for the homeowner to, to remove and replace with not a lot of reward. The net floor area that you get is roughly 14 inches. I think that's the last photograph. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Does, someone, does yeah. the owner want to speak or do we want to ask questions for the architect? Well, I have one, one more yeah. conclusion. So in, in conclusion, it appears that the projection was part of the original design uh, but the outcome of the intersection of the three different roof planes leads to an impossible condition to flash properly. And due to the prohibitive cost to re remove and rebuild the projection and the fact that we can still get the same fixture count inside the bathroom without the projection, and it's not a prominent feature of the home, we recommend removal of the projection. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I want to mention that Chair Menendez has returned and is now chair. Thank you. We were doing so well. So have, have you heard from the city or have you heard from the city? Yes. Okay. So uh, did the owner wish to speak on this? speak into this. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Pat Goodridge. My wife, Kay Seibert, and I have lived in this house uh, for about 20, 20 years now. Uh, when we bought it, uh, our realtor was Pat Parker, who some of you may know. Uh, and she said, if you're going to buy one of these houses, you understand that you are assuming the responsibility to bring it along, uh, to keep it going into the next period when the next person takes over and keeps it going and brings it along. Uh, and, and we knew that, and we have. 
uh, we discovered some things that we hadn't really thought we were going to have to do uh, to, to remodel and update the kitchen. Uh, it turned out it was our turn to replace the electrical system in the entirety of the house, which we learned very quickly after we moved in was, was a, an, an actual historical landmark paper insulation scheme that, as an electrician said, as long as you don't touch it, you're safe. Uh, so we replaced the electrical system at the time that we updated the kitchen, and that explained why the kitchen was still itself in a kind of 1920s mode. Uh, we uh, demolished, because it was beginning to demolish itself, a deck that somebody had put up, uh, we're really quite sure without a permit, uh, in the 1980s across the back of the house, and we put in a permitted and what we believe to be from the city's certification a properly concrete foundation. Uh, back there, uh, we've made some other repairs to things like the the the, uh, uh, the chimney, which now functions in the harsh Coral Gables winter, uh, and uh, to the replacement of tiles and things of that sort. Uh, we're in the game. Uh, and this project, uh, the bathrooms upstairs, which we knew were old, uh, were always on the list as projects we were going to undertake, and, and, and now it was their turn. Uh, so this one it was the first one we took up because it was the one that was clearly the in the most original condition, I think is the way to put it. Uh, and the notion was to replace our fixtures and tiles and do a fairly straightforward kind of thing that I think if it had worked out well, we probably wouldn't have had this occasion. Uh, it turned out, of course, that there really is no wall out there, uh, that what we discovered was chicken wire and stucco and the, the wood had just, of course, disappeared. It is uh, right on the line. Uh, with the property next door. Their driveway runs right next to this property. Uh, uh, and, and the Zaldivars, uh, who live next door, uh, Miguel and Ana Gracia, are, are very happy. Uh, if we do whatever we need to do to fix this wall, uh, they would just like it to be done uh, quite reasonably. They park their car right outside. Uh, they are only, these days, if you know the Zaldivars, you know they're only in town once in a while because of his work in New York and Washington. Uh, and, and we've long had a very nice relationship with them. It's a great neighborhood. Uh, we're very happy to be there. Uh, we do worry about surprises and open-ended projects uh, of, of this sort because the project is supposed to be about other things. Uh, we didn't set out to remove the projection. Uh, um, but it turns out that to understand what we're going to, to be able to do whatever we need to do in the bathroom, there ought to be a wall. <laughs> and so we are here. Uh, we'd like to be able to complete this project. We have another bathroom to do upstairs, and obviously a house like this requires additional adjustments as, as you move along, and, and, and that's the game that we are all part of. But to do that, uh, it does seem that we have to be uh, cautious about costs. There are houses in our neighborhood that have been works in progress for a very long time now. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and we'd like to, to work this through. Uh, I am not an expert in historic preservation. I am not a plumber. I am not an architect. Uh, I just teach. Uh, and, and so uh, we are interested in what everybody thinks. Uh, we would like the neighborhood to work and to succeed and the houses to be occupied and to be functional. That's why we're here. Thank you. And if you have questions, I'm obviously happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Um, the architect is on Zoom. Okay. And we haven't done public comment yet. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor or opposition of this case? Great. Hi. I'm uh, Greg Reuter with uh, Moker Plumbing. We were hired by uh, the owners of the property. Uh, to come in there and redo plumbing, waste piping, of course, the cast iron. As we all know, all the cast iron is finally uh, going away. So in the process, I called Rudy Perez and asked him if I could do the chief plumbing inspector, if I could do some exploratory uh, search for piping to see the location inside, because the original plans didn't show it. He said, go ahead, don't do anything major, but expose what you need to. So in that process, this is what was exposed. So all of this kind of starts in the uh, remodel and, you know, of course, the waste pipe. Uh, luckily, they didn't have any galvanized pipe. Everything was copper already, so that took care of part of that. But uh, this is what we do. I don't know if you all know us, Moker Plumbing. This is a, a constant thing for us. 
uh, all through Cocoa Plum, Pinecrest, Palmetto Bay. But I'm kind of glad that we did this exploratory because of the safety issue of this. I mean, it's just cantilever in there. To, there's no floor joist. We brace it up the best we could with the instructions of the contractor that's involved. Cost-wise, to eliminate the, the projection and just do flat wall and, you know, window in the same spot, uh, we're looking close to 100 grand. If we go with the projection back, tie beams, cantilever, concrete beams, and all that, I don't, you know, I'm not an engineer, so I can't tell you exactly, but they told us it'd probably be another 60,000. So uh, that's what makes it a little cost inhibitive for them. So uh, I hope you all take consideration. Uh, contractor we're using, one that works down at uh, Edgewater Drive on the condos and some other homes. So he's, you know, he's well versed for the area. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience would like to speak in favor or opposition of this case? And I'll close the public portion and open it up to discussion among the board members. I have a question. I don't know who to direct it to, but is it is it um, a requirement to replace it? First of all, is it a requirement to take it off and then to rebuild it? Is there any reason you couldn't uh, do a wood frame um, repair to this section? Okay. The, the contractor uh, told us that it could be put back in wood, but there still has to be columns that are run down inside of the concrete block. There's no tie beam from the first floor on t you know, that area, the, the second floor. It, there's no tie beam at all. It's just block. Anywhere in the house? No, the rest of the house is tie beam. The very upper part where the ceiling is, is tie beam. Obviously, but, but, but yeah, between the, the first and the second floor? First and second floor, no columns, no tie beam. In the entire house, not just in this section. No, just that area. The rest of the the rest of and the. Are those poured tie beams? Are they are they they're concrete? Poured. Tie? They're poured. It actually, when we first opened it, if you rem remember the picture, it was like somebody took a sledgehammer and, and broke it out, and oh, let's do a that, projection. That little section, and then do. But yet, it's on the original plan, so they they didn't build it right, right from the get go. No, it's 1925. You know. Right, right. But everything else had tie beams. The windows have tie beams, the doors, you know, and the rest of the house. It was just this projection. Yeah. I think there are those homes in Coral Gables that have no tie beams. You know, it's an Oriole projection. Michael. It doesn't get Mike. Much. Mike. It's an Oriole type window. It's an Oriole type window. It's not going to need a tie beam. I would be I would I would be surprised if you couldn't somehow do that in wood. That would be a lot more cost effective. It um, would. We would. The um, I know the zoning code doesn't allow wood construction in Coral Gables. That's right. But this board is able to approve a variance for wood construction for historic homes because these types of situations come up all the time, okay. and that would save you money. That's that's my, my roof, first the, comment. Right. The roof line that's on there. According to the roofer and the contractor said it, it won't work anymore the way that it gables down now, I understand that but that that's quirky and that that may okay. have an issue with flashing, but that's historic All right. You know, that's removing historic fabric uh, the the second comment I have is uh, I know that cost obviously is a factor uh, but we really can't um, vote on on this based on uh, economic hardship because uh, you, uh, the economic hardship is an entirely separate application uh, to this one and there's documents that have to be produced for this board and that wasn't done. And so we, we really now, because that wasn't done, we can't take cost into consideration. Okay. Anyone else? Questions, comments? What, what is uh, bothering me is that uh, it, it looks like a design defect on the roof. And I'm 
Mm. I'm concerned about how you fix that uh, without some kind of alteration. Uh, it, it, I don't know. I don't know if it's possible to fix it or not. Uh, as somebody who can smell mildew at 50 feet, I'm uh, sensitized to water intrusion and smells. So, I um, I'm more concerned about that and the appearance than. Um, and I don't know structurally what would be required by the okay. city um, to to replace it. You know, so to me, I, I feel like I'm um, being asked to approve something without knowing what's going to replace it or the consequences of keeping or, you know, if, if we take it off, what does that mean? If we keep it, what's involved? And what do we need to do to fix the issue with the roof? So um, it, it, to me, this is kind of a no-win situation. We don't know enough about the replacement, what needs to be done. If we were to say, keep reconstruct it, and if we replace it, say, re, you know, remove it, what is that going to look like? So it, it, it seems like, uh, Cara, I think we're missing a piece here. I, I, I don't know who you want to provide that. I, mean, I think <laughs> I don't and, either. And so I just need I actually something. had a question based on, on your comment. So the, the photos that were shown um, show the you know the flooring the substrate sort of damaged, but that's where the shower was. Is the is the damage coming from the shower? That's where the bathtub was. Right. So so it's not necessarily coming from that roof condition, or is it's it? It's coming from the roof. Okay. <clears throat> it could be coming it from. It could be both. coming from lots of places. I mean that lasted a hundred years. Okay. You're not going to last a hundred years, nor am I. We all wear out. Everything wears out. Okay, you know, I, I will say this, and, and I hope other applicants understand it. You come here and you say extremely. Okay, against what? How much is it going to cost to replace one way or the other? I don't know, but that's not what's at, that's not what's at stake here. I mean, is architecturally this going to change the building? You bet. Yes. Is that what we're here to do? That's what we regulate. Does it the cost? Mm, that's not where we are. Understand. So we'll bring we'll bring more designs, I guess, to show because the roof line won't work. I wish it would. It looks nice. It's a gabled, you know, it's architecturally nice for that building, but uh, we've had two roofers look at it and they were all scratching their head. How do we how do we dry it in and flesh flash it in? To the existing flat roofs that are there. So, have you? Guess we'll, it looks as if there's been a band aid. Yeah, I mean, have you guys reached out to a structural engineer yet to look at construction and engineering? I mean, yes. that's probably the first kind right. of see because you might be able to support it with some angles or something, and then you can hide it with stucco. I'm sure. Look, I think the board wants to help, and I think if we can get something to to to, to support it, you know, structurally sound. Even if it means of a slight modification, if we have to maybe modify a little bit on the roof line, I think mm -hmm. we'd be willing to sacrifice somewhere you can't see it, right. you know, to, to protect the front, you know, okay. that, that facade. Um, I would just say first first is get a structural engineer to give you a real detail that you could have your contractor price to know what the real cost is going to be. Right. Because, you know, he might be just be telling you a number, but it might be a lot simpler than what, you know, what we if think. If we do it in the wood. Right. Yeah, or, or in wood or even like a steel. Instead you know, of a concrete. Maybe maybe even like an angle plate or something or, you know, there's, okay. I would say that first we were, just, we were just bringing this to begin. Can we eliminate it? Yes or no. But uh, if we can't, then we'll, we'll take the next step and, uh, you know, try to do a, a design that'll look the same. Yeah. But then work with everything, the roof, the structure. The and, and you're you're going to, you, you can build it out of wood. 
you know, we it'll, can. Be a, it'll be a lot less expensive right. than you think it will be. But and, so I was, and that, you know, I mean, I don't see anything on there that looks like there's major failure of any kind in right. the photographs you showed us. Well, I'm sure you were operating under the assumption that you couldn't do it in wood. Right. Um, we were. I was told we couldn't do games. wood. Free. They might. They might give them a hard time with the wood, but I think. Well, we can. We can get around. This board can approve wood construction as okay. a variance. Okay. Which we've done numerous times before right. on, in situations like that. Yeah. And it's, yeah. and it's wood now. You're replacing it in. So. I mean, you can see the whole house is, you know, all plaster lath and yeah. stuff. So. Okay. I'm kind of in the middle here. I'm, I'm a great plumber. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, and you might uh, you call the structural plumber? engineers from oh, the city out just to talk to them plumber? about it. Yeah. They're, they're very helpful in situations mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right. I have a question for staff. Is mm -hmm. there is there a difference between a denial and a deferral? I know I asked this before, but any administrative differences of any kind for the applicant? I, I would suggest if you're asking for more information that you defer it or continue it rather than deny it. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. A, a denial, like at least for Board of Architects, means it has to be substantially different what they're coming back yes. to you with. Yes. So I would suggest a, a if, for more if it's the will of the board to, to continue the item to the next meeting or defer it to another meeting well, um, rather than deny. Well, can, well, if, what would you folks like to do? <laughs> if you can come to the microphone, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, of course, the structural engineer point is, of course, in order. Uh, deferral, obviously, this is a project we want to complete. Uh, we would, as Kay said, like to have the bathroom up and running again. Uh, it's a, a friend of mine said I took a photograph for him, and he said it's a remarkable work of art uh, in, the, in the present form, but but it's supposed to be a bathroom and we want it to be a bathroom and it's central really to the use of the upstairs facility. We have another bathroom, but that one needs work too. That's the next project. So we want to go ahead. Uh, uh, wood is a new idea to us because uh, we had thought it was off the table. We're very happy to uh, pursue that possibility uh, and to provide you with the information you need so that, that we are all moving in the right direction. Uh, uh, and, and it's a house again. Uh, uh, and then we'll have later projects. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, given that we've already heard um, some testimony, I would continue this item rather than defer it so that this record could be part of a record um, at a subsequent meeting. Okay. If, that's the, if that's the will of the commission, a denial allows them to appeal to the city commission. Um, now, a continuation brings it back before this board, perhaps with some modified plans right. or additional information. And for the, for the applicants, okay, I'd like to make a motion to continue that into the next available meeting. Second. Second that. Second by Mr. Fullerton. <clears throat> I, was, I was going to make a comment or, a, or raise a question, but when, when the roofers that they spoke with gave opinions. You know, we're hearing generalities that it's difficult. I, want, I know that there are roofing systems where you have impermeable membranes that can be laid down over a wall and come down over multiple surfaces and be underlaying uh, tiles. I don't know whether, whether a membrane type of system could be laid over the, that flat roof and down and come under the, under the, the course of, of, uh, mm -hmm. of tiles that are over the, over the projection. But I'd like, to, I'd like to hear specifics about the defects and why things can or cannot be done the next time we, we hear this. Not just generalities. Yeah. So, just as a question, too, as you're, can I ask a question before you guys vote? Is that okay? Of the, so, it looks like the roof on the projection is newer than the roof on the house. Was that was that done? This it looks like a newer tile than this. Like there was some something tried to be fixed. Oh. Okay. 
I'll find out. Go ahead. <laughs> Who made the motion? Mr. Garcia Pons, seconded by Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Aaron Half? Yes. Ms. Spain? Okay, I need to preface my vote. I'm going to vote to continue this, but I, I don't believe, regardless of what you bring, that I'll, I will ever vote to demolish it entirely. I mean, going into this, more than happy to figure out a way to, to bring it back in wood to, to, to save you money, but at least for me, uh, that design detail was original to the house and should stay there. And so I vote yes. Mr. Maxwell? Yes. Mr. Durana? Yes. Mr. Garcia Pons? Yes. Ms. Orlando? Yes. Ms. Bacavig? Yes. Mr. Fullerton? Yes. Mr. Menendez? Yes. Motion passes. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Next case file COASP 2023 011, an application for the issuance of a special certificate of appropriateness for the property at 800 Coral Way, a contributing resource within the Coral Way Historic District, legally described as lots nine and 10, block one, Coral Gable section part A, according to the plat thereof, as recorded in plat book five, page 102 of the public records of Miami-Dade County, Florida. The applicant is requesting design approval to apply lime wash to the brick facades of the home. Exists. I do. <laughs> Not just, just a, a voice. disembodied voice, voice anymore. <laughs> this is a new clicker, though. So, this is the location of 800 Coral Way. It's on the corner of Balboa Plaza. And here you can see photos, uh, current photos, the top what faces Coral Way, and the bottom um, what faces DeSoto Boulevard. It's a 1957 home by Curtis Haley a contributing resource in the <clears throat> Coral Way Historic District. Um, you may remember this came to you not too long ago. Yeah. There was an application for ad valorem that you approved in November of 2021. They started work um, in 2016 for an addition and some alterations and some restoration work. And you approved their ad valorem application in this past November or 2021. In the process of doing the alterations and the additions, they uh, came back and asked if they could paint the red brick. And so we brought that to the board as a discussion item and you have those minutes in your packet. Um, and they came to you as a discussion item because the red brick is a, a feature of the home and it was your purview to decide if you would allow them to paint it. Would you vote it yes? After a discussion, move it closer. Um, you decided to allow them to paint the home. There was a standard certificate of appropriateness issued, and they then did not pull the permit to paint. So the certificate of appropriateness has expired. Um, now that the work is done, they have decided to revisit painting the home. Um, they've revised their request. Instead of doing a paint, they'd like to do a lime wash. So that's where we are. We're bringing this back to you. Um, I believe the owners would like to speak. Can you go through the, the slides? Yeah. I, uh, my, my name is Greg Gutierrez, and I am a co-owner of the home. I've been there. We've been there over 20 years. and. Uh, I believe my, my ear, my uh, hearing is going away as other things are as well, but I believe I understood that this was approved back in 16, was it? And uh, it took us five years to do everything that we did. Yeah. And uh, back in the day, it was my wife that said, and all the gentlemen here are gonna appreciate this, that the wife is always right. She was the one that wanted to go with the white, you know, the, the white appearance. And I said, no, 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 no. This is, let's just get it done anyways. Let's get it approved. Let's get it out in the air and just, we don't have to do it immediately. 
but once everything else is done, if we want to do it, we'll have the approval. And sure enough, that's the way it went down at the board level. We got the approval. The house was redone. We loved it. Everything was great. And uh, at that point, when she brought it up again, I said, no, the red brick looks great. Let's just leave it that way. And she told me about the stains and all that. I said, don't worry about it. Whatever. Five years into the future, we're here now. <laughs> and Mrs. is always right. Okay? So she's convinced me that especially when you turn on Anderson and you're facing the east side of the home, no matter how much the growth of the plants that we have there has kind of hidden a lot of it, but there are so many blemishes on this old house, and we really thought that with the project that was right, uh, that was done by... Uh, oh gosh, these people, their signs are everywhere. Um, the, we have it on the, the next one, believe, right? You can see some of the discoloration there of the brick. That's the entryway there. Yeah. A little bit more of the same. What, what did happen? <clears throat> but this is the one that I really wanted. This is the one that bothers me the most because I'm constantly walking on the east side and most of the motorists that are on Coral Way are turning right and they're seeing this and it just is not consistent with the overall appearance of the home. And this is why for me, I'm convinced that we should go with it. And this was the inspiration, Beatus Row by, uh, what is this, this group that's- uh, Tory Construction. Hello. Well, but that's not who I'm, Hello, the developer. Oh, MG developer. MG, MG developer. Yeah. Their projects are beautiful. This one is right 100 yards from us. They've got another one that is another 300 yards from us right on Anderson, and this would blend in perfectly. So um, those are all the comments that I have, and I just wanted to, before the board discusses it, I just wanted to reemphasize this was already approved once many years ago, and I believe uh, it is consistent with our desire to really make this uh, a property that uh, can uphold its, uh, its appearance, especially in, in, in the place that it is. It's in a very, very visible place uh, of Coral Gables. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're very persistent. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? No comments. <clears throat> comments? I was on the board when this came for the first go around, and uh, I was very surprised to see the red brick continue to be red brick. Me too. Yeah, in in the view of the fact that here. we had I kept driving by saying, when are they going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> in view of the fact that we had, I think enthusiastically uh, agreed that the uh, the whitewash on it would look uh, terrific. That anyway, so that's all. I just wanted to say that I was. Really surprised that you didn't do it already, and I think you're right that it has the red brick has deteriorated because when you first did it, it looked spectacular. It looked so crisp and clean and and uh, perfect. So I think this will uh, bring that back. So I'd like I, to move it. You're going to make a motion. I, I will move. Hmm? Uh, I I too was on the board at that time, and I I recall. The condition, and it was mostly low on the east wall. That, that and I think it it has deteriorated. I don't mean maybe structurally, but the appearance yeah. is yeah. worse. But the thought of using lime wash, I think, instead of paint, which was what this was discussed in 2017 when we heard the the item, I think would be preferable. And I, if the board, I don't know how they're going to vote, but if they do do that, I would request that if they don't have a sample brick that they could bring, if staff could go on site and do some tests in areas where it can't be seen readily and do, do some lime wash tests on the, on the product on the wall to see what's preferable and what, what's acceptable. I, I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Well, the, uh, the department has some stipulations here. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have any issues with the stipulations? Uh, 
the lime wash material and color are to be specified at the time of permitting. The brick is not to be sealed and provide a sample for review by staff prior to onset of the project. Those, I, those are their uh, stipulations. I think I heard three of them. Can you repeat them? The lime wash material and color are to be specified at time of permitting. Okay. The brick is not to be sealed. The brick is not to be? Sealed. Sealed. And provide a sample for staff to review before starting the project. I think oh, I'm no, in no, agreement no. with all those three. Okay. The stipulation about sealing of the brick, is there a reason yeah. uh, that the uh, lime wash won't take as well? I mean, whoever put that on there. I'd like to know why. Well, it doesn't breathe after that. Huh? It doesn't breathe after that. Yeah, but we don't want to trap moisture into the brick. Yeah. The, the lime wash itself actually will serve as a protective coating, and we sort of want it to seep okay. in Just to be and sure. not prevent it from doing that. I wanted to be sure that the owner understood okay. the, why that was. Uh, if you I mean, that's so the exactly. your, your rationale. I'm like... One of these people was not a plumber. I'm not an architect. I'm, I, I'll go with whatever is best for us. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor or opposition of this case? Nobody. Okay. A, the uh, public portion then is closed. I'm entertaining comments, motions. I'd like to make a motion to approve with the conditions noted above and agreed to by this applicant. The design proposal for the removal of... Oh, I got the wrong thing for for, uh, <laughs> yes, for the removal of the brick. <laughs> you didn't need that second story, did you? That's right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, this is the same one I have. Yeah, yeah. Just to be, Mr. Fullerton, just just confirming the motion to approve okay. with the conditions noted for the allowing the lime wash of the property. Okay. That's there what I go. said. Yes. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what you said. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Maxwell beat you to it, Mr. Ehrenhoff. Okay. Ms. Spain? Yes. Mr. Durana? Yes. Ms. Bakivig? Yes. Ms. Rolando? Yes. Mr. Garcia Pons? Yes. Mr. Ehrenhoff? Mr. Maxwell? Yes. Mr. Fullerton? Yes. Mr. Menendez? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Ms. Couts, <coughs> any other items, issues, new business, old yeah. business? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if you'll allow, I have a couple of updates for you all about that House bill that you have voted on, as well as um, the Vice Chair's request to look at the amendment language and the subcommittee to look at the TDR reports. Okay. So first of all, House Bill 1317, which you all passed a motion on, was presented to the City Commission. They adopted a resolution, same, um, noting their... Um, position on that bill. It has been modified multiple times since we last met. It was heard in its final House Committee on Monday where it passed, and it was heard in its final Senate Committee today. I haven't seen what the vote was, but it was its final Senate Committee. Um, the amendments that have been made so far um, exclude single-family residences and those properties on National Historic Register from these requirements in the bill. Also, it will only apply in the House version of the bill to within a half a mile of the coast in VVE flood areas and a few more. And it was clarified in the House to be that though a city cannot require reconstruction in line with the previous historic building, all um, other zoning regulations, maximum height, density, et cetera, still apply to the property. So the removal of the single family residences is good, um, not, not perfect, um, but we were expecting some additional changes to the Senate bill. I haven't heard what happened today, but we'll be sure to keep you all abreast of those changes. But again, it's sailed through the House with some changes and was at the final Senate committee today, this morning. Um, secondly, Mr. Vice Chair, we are working now with CARA on the application language to get to you. 
So I appreciate your patience with that. And then finally, we looked at the city code and the zoning code regarding a subcommittee to look at those TDR reports. I believe the best way to move forward would be to have a workshop of this board to be attended by those who are interested and available to the public to address those changes. Again, any changes or proposals would have to be made to the city commission to then approve or adopt or direct staff to do. But if the board wants to continue to look at those issues, I would suggest we set a special workshop, which those members who would like to attend can attend, rather than create a subcommittee, which is not fully in the purview of this board. We just have a special workshop. So those are the updates on my end. Um, as you all know, we had an election. We have an election coming up. Um, I addressed some of the terms with you all. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. Your terms go through the end of May. Um, and the new commission will be put in place at the end of April. So if you have any questions about term limits, reappointment, I'm happy to speak to any of you about that. Thank you. Thank and that's you. all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Kara, anything else? I have something. <laughs> Briefly, um, a little report, a follow-up on our long, overly long conversation about 11-13 uh, uh, 1013 Castillo. Uh, there hasn't been one worker on the property since that meeting. Not one. They didn't do anything. They they put up a fence uh, the day we were talking about it, and on the east side, west side uh, of the property that had gone without a fence for months or mo years. Uh, they finally put that fence up, so it is enclosed now. But uh, nothing else has been done for one minute on that site. So just, just to keep you up to date. Mr. Fullerton, I'll pass that information along to our outside counsel who's working on it from the code enforcement side of it and let them know. Thank you. Uh, we re uh, excuse me, we received a copy of this <laughs> information about <laughs> Ham uh, Mathis and Hammock Park entrance. Right. Is this to be considered or reported upon or uh, information oh, well, item I, or actually, this what? Was, it, this was my fault. Uh, Dolly McIntyre contacted me and asked uh, if I knew what was going on with these structures. They're WPA structures and they're owned by the county. Uh, down at Matheson Hammock, there's the only city. one. They're in the city. There's only one structure down there that is designated. Uh, the whole thing at, of Matheson all is designated. Matheson but on it's the on other the other side. side. Of Old Color. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, could you. Wait, all which, of Matheson, but on the other side of Old Color is designated. On the other side of Old Color is designated. The east or on the west? east side? Towards the water. I don't know okay. what happens down there. That would be the east side. So and this building and the greenhouse is not Correct. designated. Correct. They're not designated, but they were done at the same time appropriately as, as I mean, they were constructed really by, the, by the WPA. And I know that Rocco Cheo, a professor down at the University of Miami, had generated this report. So when Dolly contacted me, I told her I'd find out if anything had been done to restore them. Uh, okay. And I, so I emailed Warren and uh, Kara and Elizabeth and asked them to bring it to the board uh, to see, you know, what what could be done. I, I, I believe that there was a grant that was uh, they, uh, the that county, the county applied for it, but right. I, I don't know what happened. Something's going on with it. I know that. Yeah. We can certainly report back to you. This was for informational for you guys. I'm happy to, to do a little digging and see what we can find out. Would you please, would you find out about this and also the greenhouse? Mm-hmm. I, think, I, I can't remember if it's called the greenhouse or the slab. It's like the nursery, or yeah, it's. The, it's I know, I, the, by, I know the building it's, you're it's, talking it's about. It's much further back in, mm -hmm. and and, it, and they're just deteriorating horribly. Okay. I think we should give them code citations. <laughs> they're pretty buildings. Yeah, Bill Phillips designed them. That's it. So I have nothing. A motion to adjourn. I will have a motion to adjourn. A second. Nobody wants to leave. No, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep.